barren hills descend to the lowest point on the face of the earth. And here, what looks like a vast source of fresh water is instead the undrinkable salt waters of the Dead Sea. Michael Card and I decided to visit the wilderness of the Jordan Valley to try to imagine how threatening this region would have been for ancient travelers and to take another look at the significance of wilderness in the Bible. We also wanted to reflect on what it takes to find our way through the desolate times and places of our own lives. On a cold and rainy day in Jerusalem, we thought one advantage of the wilderness would be to find warmer and drier air, and we weren't disappointed. In a winding and descending drive of about 20 miles to the east, we came down several thousand feet and found that warmer, drier air of the Jordan Valley. Here at the lowest place on earth, we also found out what happens when it rains hard in Jerusalem. Earlier in the morning, flash floods had washed over the highway as water rushed from high ground toward the Dead Sea. By the time we arrived, curious Israelis had stopped to see this desert event. Wanting to see it for ourselves, we followed the water upstream. By the time we reached the spot where the water was gushing down the cliffs, the muddy rush of water had slowed, but it was still impressive. Soon this canyon would return to being bone dry and quiet. What now seemed like playful water would be only a memory. Hey, did you get that stuff off your feet? Yeah. I, I, I think I got it off. That was, uh, that's like paste. I haven't, yeah. I haven't seen the, uh, I haven't seen this area get wet like that before. In all the years you've been here, you haven't I have, seen I it. I have never seen it, and I have never seen wow. the water cascading down in, in the rush like that. There's a bone right there. Yeah. Okay, identify it. <laughs> Camel, Doctor? clearly a camel bone. Clearly a camel. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't either. <laughs> no, that was that was the first time I've ever seen. In fact, I've never been down here before when the, the road is washed out like that. In fact, earlier this morning, the whole Route 90 was was closed down. As a rule, when I've been here, it's been hot. These these wadis or these dry riverbeds, creek beds, they can just be oppressively hot mm -hmm. with uh, with flies. Uh -huh. it, you're, you've been down here a few times. Yeah, just just a couple of times, but it was it just almost hurt to get out of the out of the air conditioned bus. So to imagine uh, being here in the first century, can't imagine constantly no. in that heat. I can't with, either. Yeah, you know, with no water. But, you don't but, understand but, why people would flee to a green, yeah, oasis like that. Yeah. But you know, back in the first century, they had no flies. You knew that, right? No. Oh yeah, flies are a modern invention. No. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know, there's a. Uh, there's a kibbutz here. You know what this is called? Wadi Kalya. Guide told us it's, it means it's, uh, it has the idea of new hope for the Dead Sea, like resurrection mm. for the Dead Sea, which is wow. interesting. Because in in we're just up from Qumran, where yeah. hope sort of died, I guess. You're right. Yeah. Well, they did. Interestingly, the canyon or wadi with a muddy waterfall ran just below and beside the ancient Jewish community of Qumran associated with the famous Dead Sea Scrolls. Foundation walls and ritual baths remain. Most believe this religious sect isolated themselves here in the wilderness to pursue what they regarded as a pure form of Judaism. We passed below three of Qumran's cliffside caves where some of the Dead Sea Scrolls had been hidden. These Jewish separatists called the Essenes chose this difficult region of the wilderness in which to live because of their fear of the Roman army. They had hoped to see the return of Messiah to save them, but that hope was lost with the Roman conquest and destruction of the temple. When you talk about a hope dying, the wilderness I think is like that. Yeah. And I think probably more than a few times hope has died in the wilderness. Israel wandered in the wilderness in a desolate way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. Psalm 107. 
Hey, Michael, look how the, the rock is splitting off of here. Well, just from the heat. I bet it is, huh? I'll the water gets in there once you, in a while. You've been here in the summer, you understand how a rock could crack yeah, open. Yeah. And here's a completely different looking rock. Look at that. Yeah. Is that natural? That, I think is, so. that is natural, isn't it? It's conglomerate. It's just, it's just yeah. it's completely all, stuck all together. smaller and stuck together. In fact, you know, if you look over there, it obviously broke off that, and I'll bet in one of the storms, just the water right carried down. down. Think of the, the power of the water that would have moved. Move that thing along. We saw the, the uh, brown waterfall a minute ago with that torrent coming down all the way from, from Jerusalem, the water. And, and here's a snail. <laughs> a, an, a live snail yet. Look at that. It is. Yeah. Probably came up from the water from the rain last night, I'll bet. Mm. Yeah, you were talking about the, the wilderness and the, the loss of hope in the wilderness. And I'll bet, I'll bet just about everybody can identify with a wilderness time in life. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah, I mean, it's a fallen world we live in. And uh, I, I encounter people all the time who have their own personal wilderness, cancer, death of a loved one. Uh, a lot of young people, I think, understand it's a wilderness you know, that we live in. Do you think young people do? I think they understand it better than we give them credit for. I think that's why. It seems like so often, you know, it seems like it's, it's an older person yeah. who, after a few years, some of the some of the dreams and hopes we had, things life didn't turn out the way yeah. we thought it would. Well, maybe and that's a different uni I mean, different uh, wilderness. You know, we all sort of have our own. But I know I know teenagers who are really despair of uh, of life and things that are what kind of stuff? not happening. What, what kind of well, relational things. I know uh, I have two teenage kids and. Uh, very sensitive in terms of being shut out by the crowd and being isolated for being different. Um, I know that can be a, a real wilderness experience. So, so we're just talking about something that's empty, something that's dry. And something that's a common experience for everyone, right? It's a, it's a fallen world. I mean, Paul says the, uh, the, the creation is groaning all around us, so we're, we're part of that wilderness experience. And it's interesting we're about what Two miles from the Dead Sea. This, yeah, probably the lowest, lowest physical spot on Earth, other than under the water, under the oceans, in a wilderness area. Kind of speaks to those down times in life that we probably wouldn't want to wish on on anybody. No, certainly not. But I think you're right. I think we all go through them. Yeah. I don't think anyone. I've, I've gone through stuff that I never dreamed would happen, and and there's there's something about the death of hope or the the loss of a sense of disillusionment. David, the shepherd boy who became king of Israel, knew the wilderness of Judea. For him, the desert would also become a place to find peace and safety, not only from the threats of an enemy, but even from the emotional betrayal of a close friend. Oh, that I had the wings of a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. I would flee far away and stay in the desert. If an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. If a foe were raising himself against me, I could hide from him. But it is you, a man like myself, my companion, my close friend. Psalm 55. Well, this is a parable of hopelessness. This landscape is. It really is. The wilderness really it's is. It's empty, it's dry. Once in a while you get a good rain. <laughs> Once like in a while like we flood. just did. Once in a while you get the event. And I, <laughs> I'm still intrigued by the fact that <clears throat> Israelis themselves stopped their cars and came out to, to get pictures of that. Now it's drying up already. Yeah. Interesting. Because that's where the wilderness, that's what the wilderness is all about. There's some more of your conglomerate rock all ah, stuck together. Okay, all right. So the other piece would have broken off of this. Look at that. I suppose. There must be all individual rocks that have, have been pushed down, probably pulled by the water on down here and then packed together. What was it that you were saying before about life and those, those layers, the striations of the, the rocks? Oh, I just think, I think our life is like that, don't you? It, it's like our, our, our life has certain periods. I Maybe mean, call them seasons. And seasons of good times, seasons of tough times. Times when you wish you could die. Yeah. Then times when you're afraid you're going to die.